Hey, hey, y'all. Allison here. I wanted to quickly thank you for listening to our podcast. I know you're about to get a lot of valuable information from it, but I also wanted to hop in and share with you guys a free SOP, which stands for Standard Operating Procedure. We use this SOP every single day in our agency to authentically grow and engage our audiences on social. It is 1000% free and I'd love for you to have it and use it in your biz as well. So just go to umaimarketing.com slash engage to go download. All right. Cheers. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Umai Social Circle where we talk all things CBG marketing and we are here to help business owners and marketers alike grow. I'm Allison. I'm the co-founder of Umai. And today we're talking about natural stacks. We're talking with Roy Krebs. He's the co-founder and CEO of natural stacks. I still use a lot of their supplements. Um, I think I actually have Siltep right here. I take it every morning. It's kind of like a healthy Adderall. I don't know (laughs) if that's accurate. I take Omega CBD instead of Advil now, uh, a lot healthier. I take their CBD for sleeping. So I'm a huge fan of this brand. So excited to have you, Roy. Welcome. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. Yeah. So Natural Stacks is an open source supplement company. Uh, Can you explain what that means? Yeah, sure. It's our quality and transparency program, really full visibility of our supply chain. So we created this It's a three tier program. When I started the company, I was pretty fed up with just the lack of transparency in the industry. You don't know where the ingredients came from. There's no test to validate what's actually in the products. And then just proprietary formulas, you know, which I think are kind of bogus. So we created this this program, which I'm super proud of. And I think it gets us a lot of respect and opens some doors for us. And so what we do is ingredient traceability which means we disclose who all of our ingredient suppliers are. So every single ingredient and every single product will tell you exactly where we got it from. And that's quite unique. And we do third party lab testing on every single active ingredient of every single batch. And I don't think anyone does that. It's uh, very expensive and it's hard to pull off, but it's very rewarding to be able to say, you know, here's, here's the supplement facts for this supplement. And here's the third party test to actually validate you're actually getting those, that amount for each compound um, rather than just trusting your co-packer. So, and we actually share all those third party tests online. So any consumer can, can see those tests for the actual batch they're holding in their hand. We just started adding QR codes to our labels. So someone can pick it up off a shelf or if they order online, scan that and see here's where you got your ingredients. Here's where those ingredients came from. And here's the third party test to back that up. And then the last thing is just nothing proprietary, full label disclosure. So we, we tell you everything we want you. Really, I believe everyone deserves to know what they're putting in their body. It seems pretty straightforward, but you know, a lot of companies won't tell you. Yeah, that's very cool. I, I had no idea about the QR codes. That's uh, something pretty new. Um, where did y'all get that from? Or have you seen some other brands try that out? Well, CPD companies are doing it because there's a regulation in, I believe, Iowa or or some Midwestern state that requires it. And so basically all the big CBD companies have a QR code on their label that goes to a a third-party test validating that there's less than 0.3% THC in that product. And I saw these QR codes and said, cool, we, we can just make this an extension of our open source program and be able to quickly show a consumer where those ingredients came from in the third party to best to back up the amounts of each ingredient. That's so cool. I really like that. But based on your transparency, is there ever any fear that uh, another company is going to come in and steal your formulas? Do you ever get scared of that? No, bring it on. You know, <laughs> I like uh, that. You know, I'm, we spend a long time sourcing our ingredients and we're using the highest quality stuff. You know, even just our ascorbic acid, which is a commodity ingredient, we're sourcing it from Scotland. It's a non-GMO source. Our amino acids are sourced from Ajinomoto, Japanese company, pharmaceutical grade, made from botanical sources rather than hog's hair or bird feathers like most amino acids. 
Um, so really, I, I know that we're using the highest quality ingredients. These ingredients are quite expensive. If someone's gonna knock us off, they're probably not gonna wanna use these ingredients because they're, they're gonna use the cheaper stuff. And it just requires a lot of work in general. And I don't think many brands are willing to do that. And I believe we have enough brand equity that if someone does completely knock us off, people trust natural stacks and they're going to choose our product over the knockoff. Cool. I like that. No fear. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's take it back a little bit. So uh, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, you and Ben and what, you know, you kind of saw, you kind of said that there was a gap that you saw that needed to be filled with the supplement space. What other kind of motivators made y'all get started in this industry? Sure. So I was, I had another supplement company before this one and I, I was working with Ben. So we already had a great relationship and I noticed my own brain wasn't working that great. I had some brain fog. I was procrastinating a lot. That was probably my biggest problem. So, you know, big to do list, but not doing much of it. And I wanted to start taking a brain supplement for myself and I didn't want to use something pharmaceutical. I didn't want to go to a drug wanted to stay all natural because that's what I was comfortable with. And I started just doing a ton of research. And as I'm doing this, my grandfather got diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia and his degradation happened super quickly. And just watching that and then seeing my own brain not working great, I just took it very seriously and, and was frankly kind of scared and said, what can I do? What can I take? I want something that works now. I want to stop procrastinating, but I want it to be safe for long-term use. And I looked at what was available for brain health ingredients currently for supplements. And there just wasn't much. There's only like 10 or 15 well-known brain ingredients. Ginkgo, goat's cola, you know, there's a few, a few botanicals, a few amino acids, some vitamins and minerals, maybe blood vacillators. And I tried them all and they just weren't that effective, you know, uh, very well studied. Sure. You know, they're legit studies that back it up, but, it's like take it for 60 days and you might have a 5% increase in memory or something. You know, not something you take and be like, oh, dang, I took my ginkgo today. I'm, I'm really on fire. I wanted something a little more experiential. And so then I started trying the nootropic blends that were available. These are brain supplements that combined in multiple ingredients. And I tried those as well. And I just wasn't impressed. They almost made my procrastination worse, almost like a scatterbrained effect. I felt something working, but it wasn't what I was going for. And so that's where our concept came in of just creating these very targeted, unique formulas that are only trying to do one thing. I, I realized that the other brain formulas were trying to do it all in one formula. You know, they're trying to activate mood and focus and memory kind of all together when the brain is quite complex and you can't just kind of blast everything at once. I realized that it makes a lot more sense to target individual pathways in the brain for specific outcomes. And, and that's what we've done. Wow. So you, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't come from like a scientific chemist type background, right? No, uh, not at all. I, I, I don't think I did very well in those type of classes. I think biology and chemistry were like my worst in high school. I was an econ major in college and then I just, I, you know, I was always an athlete. So I always took supplements and, and always did my own research to kind of figure that stuff out. And then just the more deep I got into it, you know, I started reading just hardcore medical studies and, and reading synergies on ingredients and um, found some pretty cool stuff that, that other companies weren't doing. There was, there was definitely a void in the brain health category which is a growing category, it still is, but the big brands would release maybe one or two brain products and they just weren't going about it the right way. Whereas now we have you know, 10 different brain products that are a lot more targeted. Um, we're really trying to just own that niche. Very cool. So for someone who you know, hasn't done that research and hasn't, doesn't really know any of the terms or whatnot, but um, would like to find a supplement for them, what type of things can they look at should they be looking up the ingredients or what should they be looking for when choosing a supplement i think it all comes down to being introspective as much as possible rather than saying my brain is not working great today what about it 
you know, is it your mood? Is it your focus? Is it your memory? Is it, you know, you know your ability to sleep and relax? And these are all very different things. So the, the farther you can get to pinpoint what exactly about your brain is not working great, the, the better you can help yourself, I think. And a great resource for me when I was getting started was the book called The Edge Effect by Dr. Eric Braverman. He has this assessment or, or like a quiz called the Braverman Assessment. You can look up on, online. It's right. very easy to find. And it's a, it's a questionnaire that you can answer and it will tell you which neurotransmitter you're naturally dominant in and which one or ones you might be deficient in at that time. And that was, for me, was very eye-opening, really gave me an understanding of how my own brain worked. And as soon as I had that understanding, it was much easier for me to optimize my mental performance. Very cool. I think I have taken the Braverman test back in the day. It's pretty cool stuff. But uh, yeah, I could talk about y'all's line forever. I mean, everything I've tried is is pretty awesome. Let's go back to to natural stacks and uh, when you and Ben, I guess, were getting started. What was it like initially to start a supplement company? Uh, can you think maybe about one thing or a turning point with natural stacks that made you realize, okay, this is this is going to be a, su a success or something to stick to? Well, we knew we had something almost immediately. We, we launched with two products and then went on to the, the kind of very niche biohacker podcasts. And that was basically our launch strategy was to go on, use influencers and, and their podcast to leverage their audience and get them introduced to our brand pretty quickly. Give those influencer uh, an aggressive affiliate cut to get them you know, motivated to, to talk about us. And what we had was unique. So they wanted to talk about us. But really within those first two weeks, we got onto a podcast and I think we were profitable almost immediately. And so really after the first month, we were like, wow, okay, we got something. Um, let's take this seriously and, and try to grow it into something a lot bigger. We did $100,000 in our first 100 days. Wow. So your main strategy was to get in front of as many like audiences in your niche through podcasts. And then how did you find um, influencers? We just sent cold emails, really. Um, cold email to Ben Greenfield, cold email to Dave Asprey. And they were very receptive. And, and that was, was really it. You know, we had something that was unique. We had this nootropic product, Siltep which now we've actually rebranded into a name called NeuroFuel. But um, at that time, Siltep was developed in this almost community sourced way in these online forums where it was really a couple of years of, of people tinkering with the formula and trying it for themselves. So by the time we, we came to market with it, a lot of kind of hardcore nootropic biohackers have already heard of the formula and some of them were making it themselves. But it was hard to do. You needed a milligram scale. You looked like a drug dealer because you had all this, this weird capping equipment. And it just what it wasn't a very good experience. So only the hardcore people were doing it. And, uh, you know, putting it into a nice package made it easy to distribute to a, a more regular audience. And, and Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield and Tim Ferriss and those guys, this was kind of right when brain health was hot. Nootropics were becoming a thing. You know, the movie Limitless came out a year or two before, and I think we, we were lucky to kind of catch that wave. I mean, it's pretty crazy to uh, the names that you just kind of spit out, Tim Ferriss, Dave Asprey, and I can't imagine now cold emailing or cold calling one of those guys and them even responding. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a little easier back then, um, yeah. at least for them. But, you know, there's always that opportunity. There, there's always kind of up and coming influencers that are very receptive to, to talking to folks that have something new and exciting. So I, I don't think that strategy is dead. I, I think it's mm -hmm. still very alive. Yeah. And did, did y'all offer anything in return um, or was it simply, you know, try my product. Here's what's inside. It, it depends on who we were talking to. You know, you, I think you have to be very flexible and listen to what they want. So sometimes it would be a straight up affiliate deal, you know, 15% of whatever you refer 
Um, for Dave Asprey, we offered him a great deal for him to sell the product on his own website. And he was very receptive to that. Um, for other influencers like the, the poker champion that we worked with, we gave him a percentage of sales on our entire website for a certain amount of time after the tournament aired on ESPN. And so wow. you kind of just have to be flexible and, and make a deal that makes sense. And, and all those deals, you know, didn't require any upfront money on our part. So kind of putting the risk back on, on their side and say, you know, if you can produce then you'll get paid, but if you don't produce them, it was fun anyways. Wow. So what was the poker player's name again? Martin Jakobsen. Right. And he, did he just wear a natural stacks shirt during that game? Uh, he wore a patch and we, it was a patch that said powered by Siltep. Mm. That was kind of an interesting one. He just reached out to us like, like two weeks before he was sitting at the final table for the world series of poker. And it got lost in our inbox and we didn't see it for, <laughs> for a, a while. So he, he reached out to y'all. Yes. Wow. He had been taking our products and was a fan and said, Hey, I'm, I'm sitting at the world series of poker. Do you want to sponsor me? And, you know, I think he wanted something like crazy, you know, 40,000 bucks or something <laughs> to wear, to wear a patch. And we were like, you know, no, you know, we're a startup. There's no way we can do that, but we want to figure out how to work with you. And so that's when we worked this creative deal that you'll wear a patch that says powered by Siltep and we made the patch kind of aggressively large. <laughs> uh, which worked well and he ended up winning the whole thing which which did, was just amazing did y'all have any idea that he was no, gonna win <laughs> you know he came in he was ranked like eight, eight or ninth so he was a huge underdog and we were there in, in vegas watching him which was a ton of fun and his competitors were, were drinking like fruit smoothies and stuff mm -hmm. uh you, you know halfway through these long 12-hour poker days and he was you know popping Siltep and, and krill oil and uh you know just his concentration you could tell was was well above his competitors and he just came through and won so it was super cool a lot of fun um some great like shots on espn you know close up with our with our patch and you know it's hard to quantify the actual sales that we got from that you know it's not tracked or anything it definitely had a boost but maybe wasn't as big as we were expecting, but because we set up the deal in a way that he was getting a percentage of sales, you know, after it aired, there was really little risk to us. Absolutely, I love that uh, you're kind of putting it in the influencer's hand and making them, you know, work for you instead of the other way around. It's pretty cool. So another question I wanted to ask, are there any, because I think that you guys are so innovative. Um, so I wanted to ask you, are there any brands that you kind of have your eye on that um, have influenced your brand or you in general? For me, I look up to the really high quality supplement brands. And this kind of goes back to our ethos of, of being open source is I look up to the guys who are doing a lot of testing, who, who use the highest quality ingredients. So Thorn, is one that comes top of mind. They recently purchased Wellness FX, which is that biomarker, you know, blood test, and, and other testing. And so they're, they're kind of creating this whole ecosystem of you know, test your biomarkers and then fill in your, your nutrient gaps with, with their high quality products. And I think that's super cool. So that they've actually pulled that off pretty well and definitely have a lot of respect to them. Yeah, and what are your thoughts on, you know, it's important to follow um, your competitors closely, but you know, you also want to stand out. So how do you kind of manage that sort of balance? We prefer to be the trendsetters. You know, we're, we're not waiting to see what competitors are doing and then following. We want to be the, the innovative products that come first and maybe that it's a little more risk. You know, you don't, you don't know if the maybe market's quite ready for it, but we'd much rather be the first mover than be the second mover. And so that's kind of always, we, we don't really watch competitors that closely. Of course we do. And we see, you know, how they're pricing stuff and, and where they're distributed. But when it comes to creating our products, 
we, we're always trying to innovate first. I like that. Well, let's talk about kind of your team and how it's grown throughout the years. I know initially, uh, this is kind of a two-part question, I guess. Uh, you guys only went with e-commerce um, for the first couple years and then moved into retail. So I'm guessing your team could stay pretty lean until you started to build out the retail component. So uh, how does, you know, kind of walk us through how does that, how does that look, um, building out the retail side? Sure. Well, each, each distribution channel definitely has its own challenges and requires its own expertise. Starting off online only, which we did for a couple of years, you can definitely stay very lean. I mean, to start, it was just Ben and myself doing everything. And then I think we, we brought on a, an intern and I think we just overworked him. He ended up quitting, but <laughs> pay him. <laughs> we did pay him. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and now he's quite successful. So it's, it's great to see that, but growing a team is always, I think the hardest part of, of growing a business. And when you start and you're bootstrapped and, and you're, you're very conscious of your budget, you have to kind of take sacrifices of you either hire someone young and unexperienced who's, cheap and train them, you know, in, in, into who you hope they turn into, which a lot of times fails. Um, and the other side is to hire someone that's already been there, someone, a professional that's done this for a big company. And we've tried that too. And my experience with that is that the, the kind of industry pros are used to having a lot bigger ecosystem around them, a lot better support. You know, they want to be able to offload their tasks to people underneath them, which there isn't when, when you're just getting started. So we kind of went that route too and tried hiring these, these just pros and they didn't really work out either. They were, they were overly expensive and the results weren't quite there because they didn't have the support that they were used to, I believe. So we kind of figured out we have to be somewhere in the middle. So someone that, that has some talent that you know has proven themselves in some capacity but you know maybe maybe they need a little you know training and, uh, or something so that, that's kind of where we are today is, is trying to hire people that that are really excellent in their work and fit well with our culture maybe they're not industry vets that have, have been doing it for 15 years but they're also not complete rookies that we need to train and that i think has been a, a good strategy for us um, going back to the distribution channels starting online only is is I think a really great way to go it, you can iterate very quickly so if you need to make a label change if you want to change pricing if you want to change the formula it, you can do so pretty quickly whereas once you start getting into retail outlets everything gets a, a harder you know it's very hard to, to change the, the formula, the label, or the packaging um, on, a, on a batch by batch basis. And so, so we started online only, and then we noticed a lot of healthcare practitioners were reaching out to us because we had these innovative brain formulas that they wanted in their practice or their, their customers, their clients were asking for our stuff. So then once we got into maybe a hundred healthcare practitioners, which were pretty easy to manage, you know, these were professional doctors who would order a case at a time or whatever, um, pretty easy to manage that. So doctors were prescribing your supplements. These are more naturopaths, chiropractors, okay. uh, that sort of thing. So not really prescribing, but recommending them to their clients. So mm -hmm. a lot of those naturopath type, type doctors stock a lot of supplements. And so getting into that atmosphere, I think was validating for us that, you know, wow, you know, we could be sold in a physical setting. And we're being recommended by these these professionals so then i started looking at retail and i said you know wh why not i think ben was very against it he's like you're crazy um, <laughs> but i said you know I, I know we can do it i know we can get our products into some retail outlets and it was eye-opening really that the retail world is completely different than online it's a very slow sales cycle most retailers only review a certain category one time per year and so you only have this one month window to submit your products. And if they say no, you basically have to wait another year. So 
it, it took longer than I thought. And really, I, I think to succeed in retail, you know, start, start with the smaller independent stores, the smaller chains that are a little easier to work with and get your sales velocity up and do everything you can to support that store, give them great deals, uh, train them excessively, make sure all the staff have tried your product. And once you, you have great velocity in the smaller stores, then you can take that sales story to a larger chain and be like, you know, look, I, I know we're just a startup, but we're in this, these 10 stores in California, we're selling a case a week, you know, and then that will, will kind of get their attention. And so always kind of build off smaller, smaller chunks rather than trying to go straight to a large distributor or a huge retail chain. Uh, it definitely helps to have a sales story behind you. And that could be an online sales story. You know, mm -hmm. you can say you have these very loyal customers, your reorder rate is super high. We have this tribe of people who, if we say we're available at their local store, they're going to go, go buy it. So that I think is, uh, is, is how to win in retail, but you just have to understand that the sales cycle is super slow and it's not going to just happen immediately where you launch a product and all of a sudden you're going to be able to get to a thousand stores. Right. Yeah. And I, you, you kind of spoke about training. So I know you went on kind of like circuits to different, your different retailers to train the staff. Could you see like a direct impact in sales because of that? Yes. Yeah. Totally. Wow. Um, it very, very important in retail is to get the actual store staff on your side. So the, the staff that are st standing in the supplement aisle, when a customer comes in, just your average Joe is going to go to that store staff who is generally uneducated. You know, they, they didn't go to med school. Uh, they're a store clerk and, and these people are smart and they've been working in that industry for a while, but a general consumer is, is going to go to that store staff and say, what do you have for mood or, or what do you have for stress or, or, you know, I'm trying to focus better. What do you have? And if you're not the first or second brand they recommend, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to try you. Um, and as a young brand, you know, you don't have the brand recognition either. You don't have money for nationwide ads and, and things like that. So for a young brand, I think it's training is, is the most important thing to get sell through in the store. So we are super generous with staff samples. Um, anytime we launch in a new store, we're sending copious amounts of samples for the staff to try for themselves. And then what we do now is now that we have pretty substantial distribution, every quarter or so we'll pick a month and we'll send every single order that we sent to a store will include samples with a little note, you know, here, try this, um, let us know what you think. And the, the store staff are getting free stuff. They try your product. And if your product works, they're going to recommend it. So, so yeah, our sales and retail started pretty slow. And I just, I kind of made that my main focus in, in big brands. They call it the national educator is, is someone that, that flies around and, and trains all the staff. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> I would fly somewhere new in the country and visit 10 or 20 stores and just, literally just walk into the store and ask the staff, Hey, do you have 10 minutes? I'm, I'm the founder of this company and I'd love to tell you about it and um, try to get their, their email too and follow up with them. And, you know, Hey, did you try the plus? What do you think? Let me, let me send you some more samples. And then um, the, the more established retailers, it's very easy to, to do like a phone training or a webinar where they can get maybe five, 10, 20 of their staff together and make a little training event. Uh, maybe you buy them lunch and, you know, say, hey, let's do this webinar and I want to teach you guys about the products and then give them some free samples. But super, super important, I think, for a young brand to really win an education. It's, it's very hard to do, but it, it definitely pays off in the long term. I love that. Um, it's, you know, I think it's easily forgotten that uh, the staff is your mouths on the ground. Um, so I really like that. Those are your, yeah. online, it's very easy to educate, right? Mm -hmm. You have this whole, you have your whole website, you have blog posts, you have podcasts, you, you can show videos, you, you can have as much text as you want describing the product and how it works and how they're going to feel if they take it. But on a retail setting, you have two seconds of someone scanning that shelf 
-hmm. So besides your packaging, you, you know, that's really all the education that you have. So you really have to get the store staff on your side um, to be able to do that education for you. Yeah. I mean, really all of that, I, I've always felt that online versus retail, retail is just kind of the old school. It's all old school tactics. And what you're just saying, that just sounds like old school sales tactics, you know, take people to lunch. Um, but those things still work. So very cool. So I'm going to try to wrap this up. I would love to hear about what you're most excited for, for the future for natural stacks. Well, we, our mission is to build a billion better brains. And, and for me, it's just really rewarding to get feedback from people that we have improved their mental health and their mental performance. And so really I'm excited to just own the brain niche and be the brain brand. I think we have a ways to go. We're, we're starting to get there. For me, I just want to help more people and, and help people become better versions of themselves. And that's super rewarding for me and, and our entire team. And I think that's the ultimate goal is if you can create something and put it into this world and you're helping people, you know, it's, it's awesome. So is that something you're measuring 1 billion? How close are you? <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to measure. Uh, we, we did measure, I think bottles sold. I, I forget what count we're at. It's a pretty lofty goal, but you know, yeah. why have a goal that's not lofty? So yeah. Uh, yep. You're just going to have to keep doubling 2 billion better brains, 3 billion <laughs> as you go on. But yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, Roy. If you want, you can leave one piece of advice for um, a CPG, a small business owner, or someone who's just getting started. I think they would love to hear from you on just a little tidbit. You have to create an amazing product. You know, you, you gotta have a product that is differentiated and unique and special. I, I see brands that are successful having kind of copycat products, but I think they fizzle out pretty quickly. So to create a long lasting brand, you got to have something special and you have to know how to target your consumer. Um, and I think a big advantage that startups have is the ability to move fast. Big CPG companies are super slow. They're, um, they're very slow to react. They are looking to what the small companies are doing in terms of what they're going to try to, create or innovate so that your advantage is to create something unique you know maybe it's not a campbell's soup that everyone's going to buy but you have the ability to really own a niche and, and find your target customer and then just move fast because because you can be faster than the big guys and, and that's a huge advantage i like that very cool well thank you so much roy if people are interested in natural stacks where can they go to learn more naturalstacks.com and they can reach out to me directly. I like helping entrepreneurs. So Roy at naturalstacks.com. All righty. All right. And we'll include those in the notes as well. Well, thank you again, Roy. This was super insightful. I actually have like a full page of notes just from everything Sweet. you said. So awesome. really appreciate that. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, My Social Circle is a CPG agency-driven podcast based out of Austin, Texas. We're excited to share more behind-the-scene insights, chats with industry leaders, and whatever else we learn along the way. Follow us on Instagram at Umai Marketing, or check out our website, umaimarketing.com. Catch you back here soon.